Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to learn how to make a closed, that's C-L-O-Z-E, a closed question for to be used in Moodle quizzes. So as you can see, I'm already logged into Moodle and if you look off to the right hand side, you will see the question bank if you're using the, the basic theme that comes with Moodle most of the time. So I click on this and it takes me to my question bank, which is where all the questions are stored as you know. These questions here were made in prior videos. You should already be familiar with more, many of these if you've been watching the videos. So to make a new question, I click on create a new question. Now, close, C-L-O-Z-E. A closed question is very, very common in language assessment for those of you who are ESL teachers. As you may be aware, a closed question is where you have blanks in different spots in a paragraph and the student has to fill in the blanks with the appropriate response. Um, in Moodle, the concept of a close is much more flexible in that you can just pretty much put anything inside a question, put blank spaces wherever you want, and have multiple choice, short answer, or numerical responses. It is highly flexible, but of course, it is also highly technical, and we're going to see how that works as we go through the example. So, we've already clicked on close, and we're going to click add. In this video, we're going to make a multiple choice question, just to keep it simple and to give you an example of how to set this up. Now, most of this should look familiar. You know you have to give your question a name. You have to put in the actual question here, some general feedback if you desire, and you could put in penalties for multiple choice, or you can tag it if you like to organize your information like that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make our actual question. We're gonna call it capital question. Our question is gonna be about the capital of a state in the United States, just to keep it simple. And we're making a multiple choice question as I've already told you. So here's our question, Sacramento, oh, let me use the, the larger text here, sorry about that. Large, Sacramento is the capital of what state? Okay, so that is our question. Sacramento is the capital of, of what state? Now, we need to set up our actual code or our syntax that has our different answers in it. So first we gotta do is we gotta use the left curly brace. That's right next to the letter P on your keyboard. Left curly brace. The first thing we put in now is the weight. Uh, again, I can put in as many choices as I want inside this particular question that I'm making. I can have 50, 50 choices here, whatever I want. And sometimes some teachers wanna have different answers that have different weights. If you so desire to do that, you have to put, you know, you have to set it accordingly. We don't really care about that, so we're gonna set our weight to one, which is to say, you know, they're all they're all worth the same amount. Uh, but you can set them to different values if you so desire, but that's very complicated. So we press one, we press the colon, and then in caps, we put multi-choice. This tells Moodle that our question is a multiple choice question. After that, you need to put the colon, and you have to put, you know, your different choices. So the first answer we're going to put is going to be our correct answer. So, and we want that the we want that answer to be worth all the points. In other words, there's only one correct answer. So to tell Moodle that there's only one correct answer, you do percentage sign 100, and then percentage sign again. That tells Moodle that there's only one choice that is correct. And so, of course, if you're familiar with with the United States, you know that California. California is the, um, it, I mean, Sacramento is the capital of California, excuse me. Now we need to put in our distractors. To put in distractors, you need to hold down the shift button and there's a, there's a little squiggly line right next to the number one on your keyboard, that's called the tilde. So you put that like so, <clears throat> and now I put in my distractors. So Arizona, then tilde again, Texas. Now we can do the, uh, the right curly brace and that completes it. Now, if you so desire, and again, it depends on the purpose of your exam, you can provide feedback within the questions by pressing the hashtag right after your different choices. <clears throat> so obviously, California is the correct answer. Arizona is wrong. And of course, Texas is wrong as well. Now the type of feedback is up to you. You could type in entire paragraphs if you desire here, but you also have to keep in mind the purpose of your assessment. If the purpose of the assessment is to help the students to learn on their own, 
you probably want to put feedback in here if you desire. However, if the purpose of the assessment is to you know, give points for on a test as an example, and then you provide feedback later by going over the answers, you probably don't want the students to know how they're doing during the actual exam. It could bring a lot of anxiety. So this is my setup. I don't have to put in anything for the general feedback if I don't want. And so everything is clear. I click Save Changes. So the new question I just made is right here, capital questions. If I want to see it, I click right here on the, uh, the magnifying glass and we click on preview. And you can see right here, Sacramento is the capital of what state? And there are my three choices right there. I select whichever one I think is the best and we leave it at that. Of course, this is the preview for the teacher. So um, there's more options here than what a typical student would see. But that is how you do it. So in this video, we've been introduced to making closed questions on Moodle. There are three types, as I've already told you, the multiple choice, which is what we studied in this video, short answer and numerical choices, that, which will come in the, the future videos. Closed is a highly flexible, very practical way to provide very useful assessment for students, particularly for those of us who are into the, the language teaching, you know, TESOL and ESL teachers. So I hope this video was useful for you. And I thank you for watching. Take care.